<clears throat> Esteemed Nobel laureates, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all to this year's Nobel Week Dialogue. After almost three years of coronavirus pandemic, it is indeed nice to be able to meet again. And it is so nice to see so many of you here today. The Nobel Week Dialogue has been part of the Nobel Week for more than 10 years. This is a week during which we celebrate our Nobel laureates and their great achievements. And this is a week uh, when uh, the uh, science, culture and peace take central roles. Given all the crises and challenges mankind faces today, we more than ever need uh, dedicated scientists who relentlessly seek the truth and uh, who pushes the boundaries of knowledge. And we need people who stand up for moral values. This year is special because of the pandemic that prevented us from having regular Nobel Prize Award ceremonies during the past two years. We this year have more Nobel laureates than ever in Stockholm. This gives us a tremendous opportunity to celebrate science and culture. In his will, Alfred Nobel specified that the prizes he installed should be given to the persons who had conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. Alfred Nobel had a vision that his prizes could contribute to a better world. It is our duty to do the utmost to make his vision come through. In a small way, Nobel Week Dialogue made contribute to fulfilling this mission by forming a bridge between science and scientists and the general public. And I'm sure that today we will listen to many very interesting presentations and discussions. I now hand over to Laura Spreckman, who will uh, uh, introduce the topic of today. Thank you, Karl Henrik. I'm delighted to share this day with you all. What is life? It's a mystery that humanity has been trying to unravel for many years. We have made some progress and many of the milestones have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Most recently, Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier received the Chem Chemistry Prize for groundbreaking work on CRISPR technology which opened a whole new world of gene editing and, among others, as you know, it paved the way for the development of the COVID-19 vaccines. Seventy years earlier, Watson, Crick and Wilkins were awarded the Medicine Prize for discovering the structure of DNA. Both are wonderful examples of how we have been trying to understand life. Together with other brilliant discoveries throughout the, the years that came from both Nobel laureates and other very accomplished scientists. And now, what are the next frontiers? Didier Quillot, who will join us today, and Michel Mayor were awarded the Physics Prize for the discovery of the first planet outside our solar system. This has greatly expanded our search for life. And so far, we have found life in only one single place. That is startling. The only place where we know, in, in the known universe, where we know that life exists is actually here on Earth. Think about it. The place where life thrives is just a thin blanket that covers the surface of our Earth, just about 20 or 30 kilometers thick. This is the, bri the biosphere, a pre precious jewel in the cosmos. But in the last hundred years, we've been tearing it apart. What does this mean for the future of life? 
for the future of life and the future of humanity and the future of our biosphere, which are very tightly linked. As we try for, to understand life, one very, very important goal for science is to make us responsible stewards of our lives and for our biosphere. Life is precious. We should be grateful for our lives every single day and do our best to protect it. With this, I would like to thank our partners, the city of Gothenburg, Karl Benett, region Westerjötterland and Volvo Group for supporting us. Our dear laureates and speakers for being with us today. My wonderful colleagues who have made a an Im impressive work and to all of you for sharing this day with us. Learn and enjoy. Thank you. <clears throat>